Hey everybody, uh, I'm doing another video because the video I actually did where I connected and disconnected the supercapacitor battery banks onto an actual vehicle engine uh, was too long. Apparently YouTube doesn't like videos over 15 minutes and I have to verify the account so they grab my phone number and say it's an invalid phone number. Well, that's funny. But anyways, um, so I'm redoing this and I'm just going to do a recap of everything and what happened so that you guys know what to expect when you're getting a supercapacitor uh, battery bank, expecting it to replace a standard car battery and uh, the pros and cons of each and what I think which system is actually the best uh, for regular use. So here as we can see I've got some high-end Maxwell supercapacitor, 350 farads, 2.7 volt DC. I've got a bank of six of them, so this gives me a capacity of, uh, I don't know, 50 to 60 uh, farads at 12 to 14 volts. Um, I had this guy charged up, and with a direct replacement with this guy, um, the engine cranked over maybe twice. That's it. Nothing else. I disconnected my stereo because I got a performance stereo in here. Uh, so it was just straight uh, supercapacitor trying to start the engine. And this is a dual overhead cam V8 uh, with a higher normal compression ratio, 12 to 1. But we should always take into consideration worst possible scenarios. And I guess for starting a vehicle, this is worst possible scenario. And saying that, it might start a four-cylinder. It might give it about four revolutions on a four-cylinder. Uh, but in this case, not a chance. Not even worth your time, people. Uh, so what I did is I went and did this. Seeing some other people adding lithium-ion batteries um, or lithium-polymer batteries. Uh, so I added... Two of those, these are 2,000 milliamp hours each, so a total of about 4,000 milliamp hours from there. And I doubled up on the banks, so I've got over 100 farads at 12 to 14 volts with two lithium ion batteries. Uh, these are rated for 12.8 volts, but they go as high as 15.8. Um, so, and these guys. Um, totally charged, maybe gave me about six cranks. It would start the engine, but if there were any issues, uh, and the second time I went to start it, uh, the engine kind of skipped a beat, and basically uh, at the seventh crank, it was dead. So my impressions are not that great. Um, I would say you would not want something like this to be your primary source of power to actually start your engine. I think you're going to be very disappointed with that. I actually um, also think the lithium ion batteries are a bad idea. I'm into RCs, so I understand that if you short a lithium ion battery, it will cause a fire the, or the battery pack will explode. Um, those are problems and the thing with starting an engine is that you need a lot of cold cranking amps. I have actually limited the power output on these guys to about um, 10 amps each um, and basically what I did was create a, um, uh, a limiting uh, circuit board so that I didn't cause a problem with that but I know if you're just getting a straight uh, lithium-ion battery and you go to start it and you're asking for as much as 700 cold cranking amps, uh, you're probably going to burn out that battery. I've seen another guy on YouTube use this kind of similar setup to, uh, to jump start a smaller engine. Yeah, it may jump start it, but he, he fried one of his uh, batteries. And he's lucky it didn't catch fire. He's lucky it didn't explode on his face. So it's not exactly something somebody with a feint of heart wants to get involved with if they don't know what they're doing. Um, to replace a standard battery, I'm going to say not a chance. There's no way I would ever take uh, this vehicle out anywhere with a standard battery. 
uh, on the positive or without a standard battery. Um, especially not with one of these. Not even with all three of these hooked up. I might get about 12 revolutions out of this engine. Uh, you know, there's been certain circumstances where I need more than that. And you just want to be safe. Uh, especially in cold weather, everything's going to start um, creating different conditions for engine start. And you can't always rely that your engine is going to start within the first five revolutions. Uh, you know, for a small four-cylinder where you think it's re really reliable all the time, uh, maybe. You know, and you know after two or three revolutions it's going to start for sure, then that's great. But if you miss, if that engine misses, uh, you're stuck and you're going to have to get a boost. So that said, there are benefits to having a, a capacitor bank. And one of the benefits is that I have, like I said, a high performance stereo system. And you can actually see the wiring here uh, for that. But um, having a capacitor bank on certain systems, uh, like your ignition system, your fuel pump, and uh, aftermarket audio amplifier, where a regular lead acid battery actually has a high internal resistance. Uh, when I say high, I mean maybe five or six ohms. I've seen higher, but five or six ohms when you're trying to supply instant burst energy is a lot of resistance. Uh, it basically causes uh, amperage drop, and what you need is instant burst energy from something like this, or this, or even this which has a very low internal resistance and will basically get you that instant burst energy. I think this has an internal resistance of like 70 milliohms or something and this is 70 milliohms or 25 milliohms each capacitor. Anywhere from 25 to 100 milliohms, I'm not really sure. Uh, could be upwards of towards 200 milliohms a capacitor, I guess. but. Um, these guys supply insane amounts of burst energy and that will basically improve things like your amplifiers, your audio amplifiers, it will get the instantaneous energy that uh, you're asking, uh, that it's asking for. So fuel pump, uh, if it's asking for a lot of instantaneous energy, it will be able to supply that. Amplifiers of any sort will be able to supply that. Ignitions of any sort will be able to supply that. So it does have a tendency to improve performance. Um, in the back of this car, I actually have a one farad cap. The thing is huge, um, probably bigger than, than this reservoir, oil reservoir. And maybe I can run back there and show you. But um, that's a one farad and in my hand here, you know, in the palm of my hand, I've got this Weapon X item. It is actually called the Ace Power Bank. It delivers an instantaneous 40 amps of power uh, and has close to a 2 farad capacity. Um, and this thing is ideal. Uh, basically, uh, I use a couple of these in different situations. I use one for the ignition system on here. I use one for the fuel pumps on here and it really alleviates some of the minor issues that um, I've been having. So if you're looking for something that you can tie directly into a power feed uh, that's going to give you the instantaneous burst energy of the capacitor bank and the reliability of a battery bank, I think the best bet, the safest, most reliable bet people, even though these are lighter, is that you want to have a regular battery and you want to supplement that power uh, with a um, with something that can supply instantaneous energy while your battery is getting ready to unload the energy. So that's my uh, opinion on the matter. I wish I could show you the try and the startup on, uh, on this guy and this guy, but needless to say, this guy is very weak. One turn and then you, it goes completely dead, and this guy like I said, six turns and it's completely dead. Um, I was actually worried after this guy because it started hiccuping and the engine didn't want to start. So I think I fouled a plug, went back to the battery, and it started up fine after about 10 revolutions. 
So that's what I got out of that uh, test. I would go with the capacitor and the battery. And let me see if I can uh, pop trying to show you the difference between the one, the old one farad capacitor I was using for the amplifiers that I'm replacing with this guy. So basically, there is the old capacitor bank, and this guy is a one farad, and as you can see next to my hand, it's pretty big. And with the Weapon X cat bank next to it, this is double the energy that this guy has. And as you can see, great technology and like this guy i couldn't tuck anywhere but this obviously is not going to be a problem um so i wanted to show you guys that and give you a heads up on what you're getting into if you decide to purchase um those battery banks as a replacement in my opinion they're not reliable i'd stay away from them uh, but that's my opinion and i just wanted to give you a heads up and a review of the systems of what I tried and uh, what to look forward to, the pros and cons, and, uh, you know, take it from there. Take care. Bye-bye.